Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'm starting with a piece of white cardstock that measures 4 inches by 5 and a quarter inches. And I also have a piece of cardstock that I die cut the circle from. It was a Spellbinders circle that I used on a different card. I used the outside piece. So I am using this piece as a mask. So I just put a little adhesive on the back. And now I'm going in with the Antique Linen Distress Ink, and I'm starting towards the center and just kind of flicking my way off the edge so that there's a little bit of this light color. And I'm trying to go out kind of as far as the upper edge and then the sides are because I'm going to be adding some more color. So I really want that light color to fill most of my paper. So like I said, I, I just have the round foam blending tool and I'm working my way in from the or out from the in side of that circle. So it's just going to kind of resemble like a burst from there, but the center circle is going to stay white. So next I'm going to choose a darker color than the antique linen and I have the gathered twigs distress ink and then I'm just gonna do the exact same thing but not go quite as far um, out as the antique linen was just because I want to create that light to dark so the ombre look so I'm just doing that a little bit less And then my third and final color, which is the darkest, is the Walnut Stain. So that one I'm going to put even less on. I just want that kind of right along the edge. So you can see it doesn't, the background doesn't look too exciting right now, but once I remove that circle, you're really going to be able to see that ink and the ombre look that's on there, that dark to light. And this is going to be a relatively simple card, and it's going to be flat, so it's a good one for mailing if you're looking for an easy card to mail that doesn't have all the dimension and bulk with it. So after I get that inked up, I can go ahead and remove my circle, and you could use that circle for a different project or save it for some more masking, but you can really see how that white circle pops on my card. So then I'm going to use the Love You Latte stamp set from Lawn Fawn. And I'm going to stamp my sentiment first. So I'm using the Tuxedo Black Memento ink. And I'm using the sentiment that says smile. I just thought that would be a nice one. You can send that as a thinking of you card or just to make someone's day. So I'm stamping that on the right side of the circle. And then I'll go ahead and stamp the coffee mug on the left side of the circle right next to that smile. And I did it a little bit higher because I am going to stamp the plate under it, so I just wanted them to be more even. So I also went ahead and stamped the coffee mug on a piece of post-it paper so it's sticky all alongside the back, but it's easy to peel up because it's just like a post-it note, so it is removable. But I'm just going to cover my coffee cup or coffee mug because I am going to mask that off and then stamp the plate so it looks like the plate is sitting on top or the cup is sitting on top of the plate. So you can see my pink post it mask there, and then I'll go ahead and stamp the plate. And then after I stamp that, I can go ahead and peel up the mask, and then you'll be able to see what that looks like. The cup is sitting right on the plate. And then I went ahead and dried that so I can go ahead and color that in with my Copic markers. I'm starting with the RV63, which is a really light kind of pinkish purple color. I'm just filling in the entire cup. And then I'll go in with my second darkest color, which is the RV66, and coloring in parts of the edges there. And 
And then I'll take my third darkest color, which is the RV69, and just really fill in that shading so that it looks a little bit darker. And then I'm going to go back with the RV66 and just blend those two darkest colors together a little bit more. And then again with the RV63 and just blend all three of the colors together. And I didn't really like that shading. I thought it needed, the whole cup needed to be a little bit darker. So I just went in and took my um, other colors in a minute after I colored in the coffee. You can see I'm taking that RV66 and really pulling that color over and then pulling the RV69 even farther. And then just blending all those colors together and I thought it worked a lot better with the darker mug instead of um, the shading not looking correct. Alright, so then I'm going to go ahead and color in the plate. I'm just using the E31. I kind of wanted to tie in the brown with the background, so I just made the plate a light brown tan color. And then adding the sh shading in with the E33. And then blending that once more with the E31. So then I'm going to go ahead and adhere that to my white A2 size card base. And then around the top, I'm just going to tie a bow with the May Arts Natural Twine. Um, if you don't want to send that part in the mail, you could always leave that out. But this is a really thin twine and it's lightweight, so it's not going to add any more bulk to your card. And I kept the strings pretty long on this one. So then I'm going to go ahead and just put some glossy accents over the coffee mug to make it look a little bit more realistic on my card. And it's just kind of that final touch that really brings your card to life. And then you just want to let that dry completely before you give it to the recipient or send it in the mail. And for a smaller image like this, it doesn't take too long to dry, but I'd leave it a couple hours or so just to make sure that it is completely dried. And then that is my finished card for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys back here next time. Bye!